Hello and welcome to pnclounge.com. Today we are talking about scatter diagrams and scatter diagrams of course are one of the seven basic quality tools. So if you are into reading articles rather than watching videos first link in the description is going to take you to a related article on scatter diagrams on our official website pnclounge.com. So do check that out. Also the second link is very very important because that is the entire playlist of every single tool in the 7QC, the seven basic quality tools, all of them in a single playlist. Second link, very, very important. Also, third link in the description will take you to a playlist that has every single video that we have done on quality management knowledge area. So three links, very, very important as always. Let's get into scatter diagrams now. So here's the thing. Imagine that you need to figure out the relationship between two different kinds of data. That's very important. If you have a single kind of data, all you do is you can draw a bar chart or you can draw a vertical bar chart, also known as histogram, or you can do a Pareto chart and stuff like that. But when you have two different kinds of data, how do you represent them? And that is when scatter diagrams come into the picture. So they are also known as scatter charts. So don't get confused if you see scatter charts written somewhere instead of scatter diagrams. They are both the same thing. Now, let's say you work with the testing team to create new test cases. Remember our discussion in the histogram video where we saw that we had several defects after the final round of testing. So you have come up with new test cases you have worked with the testing team and other stakeholders and you have come up with new test cases now in order to see how effective these new test cases are and if they had any impact on the number of defects you found you need a scatter diagram because at one end you have new test cases and on the second hand you have the impact on the defects found how many defects are found so you have two different numbers here so there's an example on the next slide about scatter diagram which is going to show you the relationship if there is any between these two cases but before we go there let me remind you if you want to clear your pmp in 50 days head over to pmclounge.com slash pmp study plan and grab our free study plan for your PMP preparation. So there you have it. This is an example of a scatter diagram. On the vertical axis, you see number of defects found. So you have these entries 5, 10, 15. All these are the number of defects that are found. On the horizontal axis, you have number of past test cases or the number of past tests. So you have 5, 10. These are the entries for the number of past test cases. Now, if you see around 10, you have 31, around 31 defects. So when 10 test cases were passed, you still had 31, around 31 defects. So that's how you read the scatter diagram. But as you can see in the later part, towards the right hand side, you see these three plots point the points plotted you see as the number of test cases increased number of passed test cases increased you can see here this is between 30 and 35 as the number of test cases past test cases moved to between 30 and 35 the number of defects that are found they have significantly reduced so there definitely is a relationship which which says that as the number of past test cases increase the number of defects found are going down so that's the relationship that you found making use of the scatter diagram so just to quickly summarize essentially scatter diagrams are just an xy matrix that plots the relationship between two variables in our case the two variables were number of defects found and the number of test cases passed so this definitely helps to determine if a relationship exists and in our case we were able to determine that a relationship does exist as the number of past test cases went up the number of defects found went down so 
as we seen in the example this was definitely the relationship and in our previous video on histogram where we cited an example that there were certain defects left even after the final round of testing if you make use of scatter diagrams right if you establish a relationship using scatter diagrams and you can present it to the team and you can have them agree to the fact that if they have more test cases passed the number of defects found is going to drastically reduce then definitely in the next time when you draw a histogram you will find less number of defects after the final round of testing so that's all that we had in this video hope you found it helpful do hit the like button if you enjoyed it keeps us motivated subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to stay notified whenever we upload new content and head over to our official website pmclounge.com your number one free pmp resource thank you and have a nice day